Coffee Time Talks with John Ruffle. An honor to be back with you today. And in fact, it's the 28th of October, which means it's the feast of St. Simon and St. Jude Apostles. And of course, St. Jude, who's known as patron saint of hopeless cases. Um, he's quite a favorite saint of mine, perhaps for obvious reasons. <laughs> for those of you that have been watching me each day, perhaps you consider me to be a bit of a hopeless case. But what I want to say is, all seriousness, is that St. Jude, of course, wrote the epistle of St. Jude, it appears in the New Testament. It's only a short book. It's just one chapter. But it, what a chapter it is. If you notice, as you go through the epistles or the letters to the churches, that toward the end, as you get to the book of Revelation, they get heavier and heavier. If we look here, you've got First Peter. Then you've got Second Peter, and they're really heavy. Then you have the wonderful three epistles by St. John, my namesake. And then you get to Jude, then to Revelation. Jude is a heavy book. Um, but I think, you know, we tend to be acclimatized to the times we live in. So there's a natural tendency to think that the times or the epoch we live in is normative but when you have that conversion of heart that i'm going to be showing my testimony later in the week about my journey to a real turning point in my life when you have that experience that conversion of heart you realize that the reference point for what is normal isn't the society around us but rather the reference point needs to begin to grow from the scriptures and the word of God. And to be a faithful Catholic or to be a faithful Christian of any denomination or no denomination, one has to have reverence and respect to the word of God, the written scriptures. As soon as we move beyond the scriptures, into our own understanding, our own personal interpretations and justifications, we begin, brothers and sisters, the road, the broad road of heresy, and we depart from the faith that once and for all has been delivered unto us, the saints. And Jude is a heavy book because it speaks of the judgment of those who say they're in the church and yet are involved in abominable practices. And we're not here to judge hearts, but we can judge actions, especially when they damage the saints of God, when they damage the people of God, and when they bring the people of God into false conclusions about faith. And so this Bible is the starting point in our journey of faith. It's the reference point for our faith, the point where we can always return back to. Like you go to the filling station to fill up your car with petrol or gasoline, or perhaps you plug it into the electric socket now to recharge. And without stopping, at the filling station, you're going to run out of gas or juice or electricity or petroleum, whatever you want to call it, and you won't go anywhere. And that, my friends, applies to us as believers. We need to nourish ourselves in the Word of God. Um, I just encourage you to read the book of Jude from beginning to end. I mean, it's only, what, 25 verses. That's not a big ask, frankly. I mean, we'd have time to read the whole thing if we wanted to, but I'm 
not going to do it here. It's up to you to take the scriptures and to see why to be faithful to Christ means that we have to be separated from the world and from a certain separation from society because society is not to dictate our norms. The scriptures and the word of God and teachings of the church need to be informing our norms, our beliefs, our attitude, and our futures, the way we teach our children even. I mean, here, very quickly in closing, it'd be remiss not to share the scriptures with you. Verse 3, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, or our common salvation, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. To contend or to strive for the faith. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men who changed the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. And then he goes on and gives Old Testament examples of how um, they gave themselves over to sexual immor immorality and perversion. This is verse 7. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. Folks, we need to make our salvation absolutely sure and not a hellfire and brimstone preacher. I am a proclaimer of good news, the mercy and the love and the compassion of God. But God is calling us to turn, to repent, to change our mind and give our actions to God and allow him to transform us from inside out because we cannot do it ourselves. If you are caught up and trapped and snared by sin, I know you can't free yourself. So you have two choices. You can either justify the sin and say, well, it doesn't really matter. God doesn't really mean that. Or you can turn from the sin and ask Jesus for cleansing and healing and the power to overcome and as needed the deliverance from that sin supernaturally by his power by the power of the spirit to be freed from the shackles of sin so that you can serve jesus christ in spirit and in truth and so you can be shackled to your lord and master jesus christ in whom all righteousness dwells folks it's your choice it's a painful choice but it's the best choice you could ever make in your life and Thank God for the book of Jude. Go read the book. Turn to the Lord. Just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Heal me. I yield my life to you. you know, what have we got to lose when Jesus is offering us eternal life? And we're living on this level here. And God, our Heavenly Father, is saying, I gave you Jesus. I've given you the Holy Spirit if you just receive, if you just turn, leave the baggage, and come to Christ. That, my dear friends, is an offer that no right-thinking person is going to easily dismiss. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. 
But when we come to the Father God through Christ, then we have joy unspeakable and full of glory. And we have the assurance of salvation. And we have the forgiveness of sins. And most important of all, we have inner healing and we have a place in eternity, united with our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the creator of the universe. And we can take our place in adoring and worshipping our God forever and ever in his glory, sharing his glory, living in his glory, manifesting his glory. Brothers and sisters, it starts right here. Lord Jesus, I pray this dear one watching, the heart is touched, they'll be able right now in this moment of prayer to give it all to you. That troubled soul, that addiction, that sense of unworthiness, that condemnation, that wrong affection, whatever it might be, Lord, I grant Grant, I pray, for this person, this beloved person, to surrender it now and come, Holy Spirit, in your healing power and heal you watching now. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep watching this week because I'm going to be talking more about how you can come into a living, righteous relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm going to walk you through the steps. I'm going to be praying some more with you. So please stay with it. Subscribe to the channel. Do whatever you have to do. Share the video with friends so that you're not on this journey alone. If this is new to you, just stay with it and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart through the Holy Scriptures and through the preaching of God's most holy word. Thank you for watching. This is your friend, John Ruffle, for Coffee Time Talks.